the Atlanta massacre of 1906 was an attack by armed mobs of white Americans against African Americans in Atlanta, Georgia, which began the evening of September the 22nd and last throughout September the 24th, 1906, after the end of the American Civil War and during the Reconstruction era. There was violence of whites against blacks throughout the South as whites reacted to the emancipation of blacks, subsequent black criminality, and political empowerment of freed men. Elected in 1906, Governor Hope Smith fulfilled a campaign promise by proposing a literary test for voting, which would disenfranchise most blacks and many poor whites throughout subjective administration by whites. During this time, white fear was circulated by the stage production of The Klansmen, a historical romance of the Ku Klux Klan. In September of 1906 in Savannah, where it would open next, police and military were on high alert and present on every streetcar going towards the theater. Authorities in Macon, where the play was next to open, asked for it not to be permitted, and it was not. The events were reported by newspapers around the world, including the French Le Petit Journal, which described the lynchings of the United States and the massacre of Negroes in Atlanta. The violence did not end until Governor Joseph M. Terrell called in the National Guard, and African Americans accused the Atlanta Police Department and some guardsmen of participating in the violence against them. Local histories by whites ignored the riots for decades. It was not until 2006 that the event was publicly marked on its 100th anniversary. The Klansmen stage production, Governor Hoke Smith, and the circulation of white fear with notable newspapers and the growing population and progress of black communities in the downtown Atlanta area are all a part of why the violence of whites against blacks elevated into a massacre. The immediate catalyst was newspaper reports of four white women raped in separate incidents, allegedly by African American men. An underlying cause was the growing racial tension in a rapidly changing city and economy, with competition for jobs, housing, and political power. Maps of the events during the 1906 Atlanta massacre include Five Points, Decatur Street, Herndon Barbershop, Kimball House Hotel, Forsyth Street Bridge, Marietta and Forsyth Streets, Peachtree Street, Kane Street, and the Piedmont Hotel. The final death toll of the conflict is to this day unknown, but officially at least 25 African Americans and two whites died. Unofficial reports range between 10 to 100 black Americans killed during the riots. Some black Americans were hanged from lampposts. Others were shot, beaten, or stabbed to death. They were pulled from streetcars and attacked on the street. White mobs invaded black neighborhoods, destroying homes, lives, families, and businesses. On Saturday afternoon, September the 22nd, 1906, Atlanta newspapers reported four sexual assaults on local white women, allegedly by black men. Two were later indicated by a grand jury for the rape of Ethel Lawrence and her aunt. Following this report, several dozen white men and boys began gathering in gangs to begin beating, stabbing, and shooting black people in retaliation, pulling them off and assaulting them on streetcars, beginning in Five Points section of downtown. Alonzo Hernan Barbershop was among the first targets of the white mob and the fine fittings were destroyed immediately. Individual black men were killed on the steps of the U.S. Post Office and inside Marion Hotel, where one was chased by a crowd. During that night, a large mob attacked Decatur Street, the center of black restaurants and saloons. 
It destroyed the businesses and assaulted many black people within sight. Mobs moved to Peter Street and related neighborhoods to continue their damage. Some black Americans modified their opinions on the necessity of armed self-defense as many issued explicit warnings about the dangers of armed political struggle. Harvard-educated W.E.B. Du Bois, who was teaching at Atlanta University and supported leadership by the talented Tim, purchased a shotgun after rioting broke out in the city. He said in response, I brought a Winchester double-barreled shotgun and two dozen rounds of shells filled with buckwheat. If a white mob had stepped on this campus where I lived, I would without hesitation have sprayed their guts over the grass. The events were quickly publicized the next day, Sunday, as violence continued against black people and the riot was covered internationally. Le Petit Journal of Paris reported, black men and women were thrown from trolley cars, assaulted with clubs, and assaulted with stones. By the next day, the New York Times reported that at least 25 to 30 black men, women, and children were killed, with 90 injured. One white man was reported killed and about 10 injured. On Sunday, a group of African Americans met in the Brownsville community south of downtown and near Clark University to discuss actions. They were armed for defense. Fulton County police learned of the meeting and raided it. An officer was killed in an assured shootout. Three companies of the militia sent to Brownsville where they assaulted, arrested, and disarmed about 250 blacks, including university professors. The New York Times reported that when Mayor James G. Woodward was asked as to the measures taken to prevent the race riot, he replied, the best way to prevent a race riot depends entirely upon the cause. If your inquiry has anything to do with the present situation in Atlanta, then I would say the only remedy is to remove the cause. As long as the black brutes assault our white women, just so long will they be unceremoniously dealt with. He had gone around the city on Saturday night trying to calm the mobs, but was generally ignored. Growth of Atlanta, particularly from the 1880s as the rail hub of the South. Workers from all over the country began to flood the city. Increased tension also resulted from whites competing with blacks for wages, although the latter were usually restricted to lower level jobs. Atlanta had developed rapidly. This resulted in the dramatic increase in both African American population and the overall city population as individuals from rural areas and small towns sought better economic opportunities. Freed men and their descendants had gained the franchise during the Reconstruction, and whites increasingly feared and resented their exercise of political power. African Americans had established prominent businesses and developed an elite of who established themselves from working class blacks. Among the successful black businessmen was Alonzo Hernand, who owned and operated a large refined barber shop that served prominent white men only. This new status brought increased competition between blacks and whites for jobs and heightened class distinction. One of the many significant commercial buildings within the district is the Atlanta Life Insurance Company, the second largest black insurance company in the United States. The Atlanta Life Insurance was founded in 1905 by Alonzo Hernando, a former slave of Walton County, Georgia. The central building of the Atlanta Life Insurance Company complex is a Bow Arts building facing Auburn Avenue. The district also includes the Rucker Building, Atlanta's first Black-owned building, constructed in 1904 by Henry A. Rucker, a former slave turned businessman and politician. Also located on Auburn Avenue was the Atlanta Daily World. 
the first Black-owned daily newspaper, which was founded in Atlanta in 1928. At least two dozen African Americans were believed to have been killed during the 1906 Atlanta massacre. It was confirmed that there were two white deaths, including a white woman who died of a heart attack after seeing mobs outside her home. As an outcome of the riot, the African American economy suffered because of property losses, damage, and disruption. Some individual businesses were forced to close. The community made significant social changes, pulling businesses from mixed areas, settling in majority black neighborhoods, some of which were enforced by discriminatory housing practices in the 1960s, and changed other social patterns for blacks in the South. In the years after the riot, African Americans were most likely to live in predominantly black communities, including those that developed west of the city near Atlanta University or in eastern downtown. Many black businesses despaired from the center to the east, where the thriving black business district known as Sweet Auburn soon developed. Responses to the riot. The New York Times noted on September the 30th, 1906, that a letter writer to the Charleston News and Courier wrote in response to the riots. Separation of the races is the only radical solution of the Negro problem in this country. There is nothing new about it. It was the Almighty who established the bounds of the habituation of the races. Negroes were brought here by compulsion they should be induced to leave here by persuasion. After the Great War, World War I, Atlanta worked to promote racial reconciliation and understanding by creating the Commission on Interracial Cooperation in 1919. It later evolved into the Southern Regional Council, but most institutions of the city, including Atlanta Fulton, remain closed to African Americans. For instance, no African American police man or woman was hired until 1948, after World War II. The Sweet Auburn Historic District is a historic African American neighborhood along and surrounding Auburn Avenue, east of downtown Atlanta, Georgia. The same name, Sweet Auburn, was coined by John Wesley Dobbs, referring to the richest Negro street in the world. One of the largest concentrations of African-American businesses in the United States. A National Historic Landmark District was designated in 1976, covering 19 acres of neighborhoods, significant for its history and development as a segregated area under the state's Jim Crow laws. Sweet Auburn is one of 242 officially recognized neighborhoods of Atlanta. Edgewood Avenue, which runs through the heart of Sweet Auburn, has become a hot spot for viewing street art in Atlanta. The Auburn Avenue Research Library on African American Culture and History is an institution dedicated to preserving and highlighting African American culture, history, and is also located in the heart of the district. Several of the Sweet Auburn murals can be found on the Atlanta Streetcar map, reflecting the history and catalyst for change in the Atlanta community. In 2006, on its 100th anniversary, the city of Atlanta and citizen groups marked the event with discussions, forums, and related events such as a historic walking tour, public art, memorial services, numerous articles, and new publications celebrating and exploring the history of the 1906 Atlanta massacres and race riots. The next year, it was made part of the state's social studies curriculum of public schools.